Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to MTGO Traders. My name is Taryn, and let's talk about rotation proof mono red aggro. So as you guys know, Mono Red Aggro has kind of been a pain in standard side for well over a year now, I feel like. Um, probably been less than that, but it feels like it's been a forever. <laughs> so we've had kind of a, a reprieve uh, from a good aggro deck uh, being in standard. So this video is about kind of taking apart the uh, new aggro deck after rotation without any new Guilds of Ravnica cards just yet and seeing if that deck is actually standing on its own feet or if it's kind of not as good. And obviously it's not as good thanks to the cards like Bum at Courier, um, but not as good versus kind of the rest of the competition post rotation. So let's get into the deck tech and then after that get into some gameplay. Starting with, of course, our creatures for the list. We've got 22 in total. Fanatical Firebrand, Gitu Lavamancer. Is it Gitu or Gitu? I can't remember. Uh, Vaishino Pyromancer and Goblin Chain Whirler. All four of us here, all completely valid and great in a mono red list. I believe this is probably the current list as far as the cards in a mono red aggro list right now. I think Lava Runner is probably being replaced by Beaumont Courier currently, uh, but Lava Runner is very good on turn one and very good on turn three if you have some spells to burn to make Lava Runner a 2-2 with haste. Uh, also very good in the mid to late game, being a one mana 2-2 as well. Um, Fanatical Firebrand is great for us because it gives us one point on turn one, but also can be a good way to, you know, put a point of damage anywhere on the battlefield, maybe killing a Landmore Elf as well. Pyromancer is just good for us to be able to burn for two, uh, to a Planeswalker or player, but also be able to get in for two as well as an attacker on turn three. And Chain Whirler is a great way to get rid of all the kind of tokens your, your opponent has on the battlefield, as well as weaken their entire board state whenever you swing in. And it has first strike, and it hits your opponent, and it hits your, planes, your opponent's Planeswalker. This card does amazing stuff. It's super good. It has to be a complete four of in here. Obviously, Chain Whirler is the card, like the point of contention, like the deck, like this is the kind of card that might get banned in standard. Um, but after rotation, I feel like the deck has kind of calmed down to the point where Chain Whirler is just good and not amazing. Uh, but still, to me, very, very great. Uh, let's get on to the uh, top end here for us. We've got uh, four Rekindling Phoenix, which is the, by far the most expensive card in the deck list here, and Demanding Dragon. I love this card main board because it just destroys control decks if they're not ready for it. And it's also a great way to, um, you know, either finish off a match against a uh, like a mono green deck where they have lots of Hexproof creatures where they have to sacrifice their Hexproof creature to stay alive, or they just die to it uh, if they don't have any creatures on the battlefield. Uh, now, it is kind of bad against another aggro matchup, so we could board this out in game two. Uh, but in game one, it's very, very good against most of the meta right now. Rekindling Phoenix, again, one of the best cards in red. Um, basically requiring two removal spells or an exile trigger. Seal Away kind of gets it a lot easier nowadays, so that is kind of the, the crux of this card right now. Um, but Veracity's Contempt is also another good card in black as well. So I think this card is still good, but not great anymore thanks to cards like Seal Away, but still an amazing card and one that kind of needs either you have to have removal or you're just going to see it come back turn over turn if you're kind of trading with it. Uh, that's all the creatures in the deck list. Let's go to spells real quick. We've got Shock, Lightning Strike, Wizard's Lightning, and the Flame of Keld. So all burn and basically hand refill right here for Flame of Keld. Shock for two, Lightning Strike for three, Wizard's Lightning for three for one if we have a wizard on the battlefield, which we might. And Flame of Keld is a great way to discard our hand if we have no hand, draw three cards because we, you know, draw a card and this ability activates, drawing us two more cards, and then we actually get two points of extra damage on stuff. So Pyromancer does four points of damage, Shock does four points of damage, Lightning Strike does five, and Wizard's Lightning does five as well. Flame of Keld, uh, if it gets on the battlefield and stays for three turns, it's probably the way you're going to win the match. It's amazing. Really love this card in the deck list here. But that's all the spells in the deck list, only 15 in total. Let's get on to lands here, and it's quite simple. It's just Mountain and Field of Ruin. Field of Ruin here basically just for a flipped Ascanta or flipped uh, Argos Bloodfast, and of course 21 Mountain as well, rounding it out to 23. So let's move on to the sideboard here and see what we're working with. Um, the bad thing is we only have Smelt really to be good for us for artifact removal. Uh, we're losing a braid with the rotation, so hopefully we'll get something kind of similar to that uh, in the new set. If not, Smelt is going to be the card that's going to be in the sideboard here for us. A one mana instant destroy target artifact. Simple, straightforward. It's not a braid, though. <laughs> it doesn't have, like, multiple purposes. Not as good. Captain Lannery Storm, though, is quite good against the uh, kind of aggro matchup, the mirror match, stuff like that. And Fiery Candidate is amazing against, um, right now, against the Reservoir decks, any kind of token-based strategy. Uh, because keep in mind, we have... Um, got our pirates in our deck list as well and if we bring in candidate we'll probably bring in lannery storm too fight with fire is here for us to deal with that mono green aggro list kind of killing those um 
you know, the uh, Steel Leaf Champion, things like that. And if we get enough mana, which we likely will not, hopefully the game will be over by then. But if we get into, you know, uh, 9 mana, we can do 10 points of damage to an opponent's face or divide it across as many number of targets as we want. Moving on to the rest of our sideboard here, we've got uh, Repeating Barrage, Meteor Golem, and Banefire. Banefire is super good against the control matchups right now. Repeating Barrage is really good against, like... Um, the more mid-range matchups where you're swinging in, you're kind of, they're kind of building their board state, and Repeating Barrage will be able to do some points of damage, and while you're continuing to swing in, you'll be able to get Repeating Barrage back, so just a very, very good card for that. And Meteor Golem is against, or is good against cards like Seal Away, cards like Cast Out, and anything like that that your opponent has on the battlefield, and you really need to deal with it. Meteor Golem is going to do that for 7 mana. But that is the full 75 on the deckless guys. Let's go to the actual layout here. If you want to build this on MTGO Traders, it's coming to about 143 tickets. And if you want to build this on paper, it's coming to about 147. It's so crazy how, like, the the, the numbers kind of come closer together as, as, like, the deck is more popular. Or the cards are more popular, especially in the standard environment, uh, as far as MTGO to paper. Um, obviously, the most expensive card in this deck list will be the Rekindling Phoenix, followed by Goblin Chain Whirler, and uh, Demanding Dragon is, is a little bit now, uh, and that's basically it. Everything else is a penny or two, uh, and yeah, that's it. That's it. So let's get into some matches, guys, and see how this deck does. I'm really excited to show you these. All right, guys, let's get into some matches and see what Mono Red Aggro Rotation Proof can do. Have a decent opening hand. Uh, if we have any more than two lands, or at least two lands, we're probably going to go with a keep here. The Manning Grad Dragon in our hand is a little annoying, but that's all right with thanks to Firebrand, Strike, and Shock. Uh, blue, white on opponent, probably a control shell here. Uh, going for an Inspiring Vantage. We see Boros, maybe, or not Boros, but um, Jeskai. A Danto Vanguard is their turn to play, so this is probably an aggro list. Going to go with the Mountain here and attack in. Obviously, they're not going to want to pay that four life just to make sure that... Uh, a Danto Vanguard can block the one point of damage. Um, we keep our mana up here, and they go for Curious Obsession onto the Vanguard. I go with a Shock to make sure that uh, they lose the four life here on top of Vanguard, going down to 14. Now keep in mind, the uh, Indestructible Claws for Vanguard is super good if you have lifelink going on, but if you don't, it just hurts you turn over turn. They go for Gardusha's Zeal as well. They get to draw a card and get in for uh, five points of damage, which is hurtful on turn two, or on turn three. We go for Lightning Strike on our turn here, making them pay another four uh, for Adanto Vanguard, and then get in for Firebrand, basically being able to do 10 points of damage in the past two turns. Just amazing. A uh, Cartouche of Knowledge here for them. They draw a card, they go to four, four on the uh, Vanguard here, so it's out of Lightning Strike range. They get in for six, drop us down to nine. And uh, five cards in hand. We have one more mana going for a Rekindling Phoenix here. A great blocker for the Adanto Vanguard, getting in for one point of damage with the Firebrand. And basically just waiting to see if they have any kind of removal for the Rekindling Phoenix. And if they don't, we just block with it. And uh, keep in mind, the Vanguard does not have First Strike either. So, if they gave it First Strike, this would be a little bit more annoying. But with the block here, that's totally fine and feasible. They go dive down to make sure Adanto Vanguard survives. Rekindling Phoenix comes back, though, as a 0-1, and we get it next turn. Champion of the Flame coming in on their side of the field. We go for Demanding Dragon here, and um, Champion of the Flame is immediately sacrificed. They don't want to take that five points to the face, and then we get in for five points of damage, keeping Demanding Dragon back as a blocker for Adanto Vanguard, and that's probably going to do it for the game one here. Let's see what they have. They have a uh, Danitha, and they're out of cards, and that's going to be it. Let's get into game two here. As far as the cards on our sideboard, really nothing we want to bring in, really. Fight with Fire could be something, so we bring that in over a uh, Flame of Keld, and then just hit Submit really quickly, getting, get, getting into uh, game two here. Um, so one of these things with the uh, I like, like encha enchantment decks is that Adanto Vanguard is probably the best thing to put enchantments on. It's just if you're playing up against a burn deck like our deck, oh no, opponent skipped down to two. <laughs> if you notice and go back there a little bit, that was so fast. They actually mulligan down to like three or two. That's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> and that's gonna do it. Let's get into match two here. Uh, getting in for one. That was so fast because I, I sped up the video, but wow, amazing. <laughs> Sulfur falls here into a Gitu Lava Mancer, probably a wizard shell here. Two mana going for a shock onto the uh, Lava Mancer, getting in for one. And then uh, just a passing turn. Have three Rekindling Phoenixes in hand. We desperately need mana for those. Let's see if we get it. Going for a. Pyromancer themselves, dropping us down to 18. Let's see what we get on the draw here. Another Pyromancer for us. Nice. Drop them down to 16, and then we just crash in for two points on the ground, I feel like. 
Then now, since this is a Grixis list uh, with uh, blue, red, and black, uh, we might see some burn spells like Magnet Spray, Shock, things like that. Pyromancer trading with the Lava Mancer is probably all right. Gutter Snipe and Claim, interesting. Claim to Fame is a card we never really saw while it was in uh, Standard, and uh, kind of sad because it is an amazing card overall. Draw into a shock here, definitely going to kill the uh, Gutter Snipe and get in for the Lava Runner, and uh, just swing in for five. Opponent's going to block the Lava Runner here, and then we get in for three points of damage, clearing their board state again. Gutter Snipe is just a um, kind of a pain in our side at being able to drain us turn over turn. Adelie's and another claim to fame, bringing back a Gitu Lava uh, Runner and getting in for uh, five points of damage this turn. Not bad. Still only two mana here. We have a shock off the top, though. We're going to kill the uh, Cinder Wind and get in for three points of damage, dropping them down to nine. So pretty even race so far. Pyromancer coming off the top for them, dropping us down to seven. And uh, Fame giving uh, Pyromancer plus two, plus zero, and Haste getting in for five this turn, dropping us down to two. Top decking a Lightning Strike here. We kind of think about it for a second. We could go with a strike on something, but we decide to pass turn first to see if we uh, can go for a kill here. Now, if they get into, an, oh, there's an archer. If they get into a, a shock or a lightning strike, then when they just win here. Fame going to uh, the archer here. We're going to target lightning strike on the lava runner. Reason being is it's a one, two instead of a one toughness. And they decide to crash in for six. We go with a double block here. Destroying both. We're down to one. We really need to bounce back. Demanding Dragon is not what we wanted to see. Oh, no. And they just Witcher's Lightning us. Negative two. Ouch. Let's get into our uh, game two here. We actually just keep what we have and get into game two. Play first? Yes. Uh, let's see. Three cards in hand. Goblin Chain Whirler, Pyromancer. That's fine. Flame of Keld really helps, and Demanding Dragon, if we get into 5 mana, is amazing. Let's just not draw, or draw into uh, 3 Rekindling Phoenixes back to back. So we do have our 3 red mana for our Chain Whirler, which is not bad. And if you notice, there were a lot of 1 toughness creatures on their side of the field, so Chain Whirler will be a great addition to that. Shock hitting the Pyromancer, coming in with another Pyromancer of their own, dropping us down to 18 as well. The Mirror Burn is strong with this one. We go with a Chain Whirler here to give board presence as well as destroy the Pyromancer and pass turn. Five cards in hand. They go with a Lightning Strike to the Chain Whirler. We have a turn four Phoenix. Very nice. Passing turn back to them. Five cards in hand. Four mana on the battlefield. Getting for an Archer as well as a Charter Course. Now they won't be able to uh, draw two cards and not discard, so they discarded a land there. Going for a Demanding Dragon, hitting them exactly five to the face since they don't want to lose the Archer. And then four to the face, dropping them down to eight. Demanding Dragon and Rekindling Phoenix, just a force to be reckoned with. We're not seeing any black mana just yet. And that's going to do it on that particular match as well. Nice. Let's get into match three here, or game three here, and see what we can do. Opening hand isn't amazing, but it's not terrible. We could get into a uh, land, but we go with the Mulligan here. Keep Wizards Lightning on top. On it on the play with their Lava Runner and pass turn. We decide to go for a land and shock to the face on the uh, Lava Runner. Pass turn back to them. Six cards in hand for them. Going for a tapped Drowned Catacombs. So they are on their correct mana here. Can you go for a Firebrand and swing in? Now, one of the things on this particular match is that uh, I believe they just, they, yeah. Let's see here. Got five cards in hand, getting into their third land, I believe. Yeah, third land. They probably mana flooded here, though, because I believe we see a scoop. Yep, scooping it up. Very sad. Let's get into match three here. Showing a lot more matches in this video because we did have a couple matches that ended a little prematurely the first time. But getting into these heavier matches near the back end is fine. Awesome opening hand, going for a fanatical firebrand attack. Blue white, we're gonna go for a pyromancer, trying to get around a essence scatter, and we definitely succeed, and then get in for one more point of damage with the firebrand if we can. Now, seal away in the blue white list is a lot is uh, very prevalent, and Gideon's reproach is also a card that you might see as well. Blue, uh, two blue sources there, so we may see a uh, disallow or something like that this turn. We definitely will be looking forward to that for sure. Going for a shock first, and then uh, getting in for three. Try to play around any kind of a spell here to counter our stuff. 
play a Lava Runner, and uh, opponent's thinking about whether or not to respond. We play the second Lava Runner, and they don't respond to that either, so we might see a uh, Settle the Wreckage this turn. So we decide to go for a two attack here, getting in for three, and we definitely do see a Settle the Wreckage. So that's not terrible, considering that we have a Rekindling Phoenix in hand, and it's not going to be countered, so not bad at all. Was kind of afraid of a Fumigate that turn, but we did get in for five this turn if we can. Cast out to the Rekindling Phoenix. Uh, we do one point of damage, driving them down to ten. They're playing good keep away. And Goblin Chain Wheeler entering the battlefield since, again, this is control, so we really don't have to worry about um, waiting on them giving a, a wide board state. Pyromancer off the top for us. Four cards in hand. They're going to go with a Disallowed, make sure that we don't get that extra point of damage. And then we attack him with everything, seal away on the Goblin Chain Wheeler, and we get in for two. Down to seven here. Slowly but surely, we're getting them down. Another Pyromancer off the top. It does hit the battlefield and drop them down to five. We once again get in for two, trying to see if we can get around some more Settler Wreckages. Seal away forever. <laughs> drop them down to four. Memorial to Genius here, two cards in hand. Demanding Dragon off the top. If they don't counter it, it's an automatic loss, and it's a scoop it up. Nice. Bringing in Bane Fire here, taking out some Chain Whirlers. Chain Whirler probably is fine to bring into this list um, and taking out maybe the um, Lava Runner instead, but I do think that um, it's either way. It really, really depends on how you want to play the match. Thinking about bringing in a Meteor Golem, and we decide to bring in just one. Go with a Mulligan here. Go with a Keep in uh, bottom, that Lightning Strike. Hit a land, go for a Firebrand, and attack in for one here. Drive them down to 19. Two were killing Phoenixes in hand is kind of a bad sign. And then we draw into a Demanding Dragon. Not good for us. Three land for opponent. Hitting their uh, search for Ascanta, we finally find a second land. Go for Pyromancer. Drop them down to 16 and try to attack in for two. Might go for a Flame of Keld this next turn. Uh, now, one of the things that is definitely a misplay on this match uh, is uh, they go for a... Glimmer of Genius discard on Search for Ascamped and then seal away. We go Shock to the Face, waiting one more turn for a land. They find Field of Ruin, so we should have attacked in here instead of playing Flame of Keld because they obviously would have uh, had uh, Settle the Wreckage here, and we would have been able to play Rekindling Phoenix. So we attack out, they go Settle the Wreckage, and then I feel super bad for Flame of Keld because we just discarded two Rekindling Phoenixes and a Demanding Dragon. <laughs> so... That's the point of the match. We definitely lose, especially drawing two lands as well with Flame of Kel's ability. And uh, seeing that our Pyromancer gets disallowed, that's basically going to do it for us as far as the game goes. We do play it out, though, to try and make sure to see if we can, you know, turn the match around, get into six lands here. We're, they're down to ten, and we have Banefire in our deck, so there is a way for us to top deck into a Banefire to uh, kind of burn them to, de to death. Seven on the field. Teferi hitting the battlefield, going plus one. Going Field of Ruin on Memorial to Genius, just to uh, thin our deck a little bit from lands to make sure we don't get into them. But, uh, you know, the Mana Flood is hard here, and it's going to be hard to get out of. Six cards in hand for opponent. They're definitely in the driver's seat now. Lightning Strike off the top. We go for Lightning Strike directly to see if they'll let us do that. Um, if they do do that and we go for a Banefire next turn, we actually win the game. So kind of hoping for an ability here to where opponent does not go with a Negate, but they go Negate here. And Lightning Strike is definitely countered. Search for Ascanta pitches Essence Scatter to the graveyard and flips. They have a flipped Ascanta now. Hunting for another Teferi. Nice. Firebrand off the top for us. We are able to get in for an attack here if we can. But nope, seal away. This is the point of the match where you should scoop it up. But I'm being very stubborn, saying if they're only at 10 life, we can definitely turn this around. Lava Runner hitting the battlefield. Seven cards in hand. Obviously, that's going to get Edson scattered. <laughs> oh, goodness. And they go for eight on Teferi here. And uh, we need to top deck Banefire right now. When we don't, we go Wizards Lightning. Trying to get down Teferi. And it's... Uh, let's see what happens here. So many mana are, is being tapped right now. Sinka paid for nine. And we scoop it up. Taking out Meteor Golem, thinking about bringing in another Chain Roller, which we do, and then we just hit Submit here. Uh, definitely need to play more aggressive in this particular game. Two land in hand, not bad, especially with all the uh, two land or two mana uh, cards in our hand. Go Lava Runner, pass turn, tap land for opponent, go for another land, go Pyromancer, and then get in 
for one. Could have gone in for two there with a the fire brand, but wanted to make sure the Pyromancer got under uh, a counter here. Another Pyromancer hitting the battlefield. And a Firebrand, so we have everything revving super fast going right now. Seal away for their opponent. Seven cards in hand. Do they hit their third land drop? They don't! That is awesome, and that's it for the match there. Keep in mind, if you don't hit a land drop, if you're on control against a mono red aggro list, it's basically game over, and opponent saw that. Let's get into game four here and see what we can do. Medical Firebrand hitting in for one here. Let's see... Got a land drop from opponent, second land for us, and we just get in for one here. Having the possible four points of damage with shocks, but waiting for any kind of uh, knights or anything like that. We see white black there, so we're thinking maybe a history medallion style deck. But nope, this is just Esper Control. <laughs> because of course it is. Let's go for another land and attack in. And uh, we go for Flame of Kel this turn. And they do let it happen, so that's pretty good. We had nothing in our hand to uh, slow that down for Flame of Keld on turn three. Uh, might have been a good idea to hold some more mana, but we really need to get into some answers and uh, creatures as well as burn. Drawing three cards this turn, getting to <laughs> more mana as well as another Firebrand. Let's just get in for two here and see if we can get in for two more points, driving them down to 11. Very nice. Six cards in hand, drawing into their seventh on their turn here. They go seal away after damage is done, which is interesting. And then they go to their turn here, playing a land, five cards in hand. Passing turn back. Drawing into a Wizard's Lightning. Now keep in mind, Wizard's Lightning and Fanatical Firebrand are all doing two extra points of damage. Thinking about attacking here, but actually decide to go for a sack, do three points of damage to their face, and then Wizard's Lightning to their face. Because that's a ton of damage instead of getting seal away or settled or wreckaged. We wanted to just do that three points of damage directly. They go for a pass here. We go Pyromancer, trying to see if we can continue to burn them down. They have Essence Scatter on there, not bad. Five cards in hand for opponent. We're out of cards in hand, so we need to get into some good burn. Omen Speaker for opponent here. We top deck into Goblin Chain Whirler, which is not bad, because it can beat the Omen Speaker, and it does one point of damage, driving them down to two. So it does get, uh, he, he, he does hit the battlefield. Five cards in opponent's hand here. Hoping they don't hit another black mana, or they do hit a black mana, but they have bullets clutches there, which is very interesting as far as a game one, or a game two game plan. Um, shock to the face off the top, and that's going to be the game. I uh, was kind of thinking they may have a Vrassus Contempt there. If they did, it would have been very, very difficult to, um, you know, burn them out, as uh, Vrassus Contempt does gain them some life. We uh, shift some cards around in the sideboard and get into game two. Have a decent opening hand, really need a third mana, but so far, so good. Tap land for opponent. And uh, hitting into a third mana, but it's not a complete red mana. So Goblin Chain Wheeler is going to be a little bit more difficult to get on the battlefield. Unless you draw into a red mana. Uh, Pyromancer could be the play. Or Lava Runner. We go Lava Runner first, thinking it's going to get Essence Scatter. And it definitely does. Pyromancer is great because of the two points of damage hitting the battlefield. Going for a, let's see, Lava Runner once again. And then a Pyromancer, just to see if they had another counter. But they have Opt here. Trying to get into another counter, and they don't hit it. Passing turn back to the opponent. Five cards in hand. Let's see what they go for here. Going for a Glacial Fortress. So they do have enough for a Brass's Contempt here. Passing turn back to us. We have lots of stuff going on. Getting in for three points of damage if we can. We could have uh, Wizard's Lightning into Shock, or Wizard's Lightning into Lightning Strike that turn. Decided to wait a turn to see if the, they go for a seal away on the Pyromancer, which they do. Go for Lightning Strike to the face, or Wizard's Lightning to the face, and Lightning Strike to the face, driving them down to nine. So much burn in our hand right now. Keep in mind, we have six more points of burn in our hand, thanks to the Chain Wheeler Shock and Lightning Strike. Revitalize is an interesting card. Haven't seen that much in testing or brewing uh, for the Esper Control list. But very interesting nonetheless. Getting in for two points of damage here to see if we can. Obstructionist hitting the battlefield, and then they go for a block here. We're going to go with a shock to the face on the Obstructionist, and Lightning Strike to the face once again. Basically making that revitalize null. Four cards in hand going for Skittering Survivor. Very nice. Basically a way for them to get another land. Hitting a Plains, and playing a Plains. Loving a red mana right now, would love that. Gonna go for a Field of Ruin to kill that Glacier Fortress. And reason being is because we wouldn't get a red mana. So go for a Fanatical Firebrand. 
if it hits let's see if it hits it gets syncopated for one and then get in for two here down to seven inching closer and closer to victory here irrigated farmland no problem three cards in hand tapping out four five going for Karn here so Karn is an interesting pick for this deck for Iceberg Control. They have Glacier Fortress and Irrigated Farmland. We gave them the Fortress uh, because it doesn't have uh, cycling. It doesn't give them the ability to get into a control card. Finally, some land. Chain Whirler coming in. And uh, dropping them down to six. Doing a point of damage to Karn as well and getting in for two. Dropping them down to four. So close. Can we turn this match around? It's always crazy because when you're mono red aggro, it's uh, you're just in top deck city against a control list forever. Blink of an eye for opponent there, drawing a card off of that as well. Laying another land, two cards in hand. And they're making a 2-2 construct here. Banefire off the top. So we actually have the win here with Chain Whirler and Banefire. So as long as they don't gain life, we actually are okay. We're going to go for an attack here. They could go with the construct block, which they do. Not bad. Now we just need to last the turn. Can they not gain life for a turn? <laughs> we'll see what happens. Eldest Reborn and Island, all right. Give them Island there. Now don't counter my Banefire when we try it. Gonna get in for a three first. Basically seeing if opponent has anything. Torrential Gearhook off of that. Revitalize is the card they pick, so they actually get around the ability for us to uh, kill them this turn. Which is fine. I'm okay with that. This means that we can play Rekindling Phoenix this turn either way. So we go for Rekindling Phoenix, which is a 4-3 flyer. An opponent has an opt here, looking for a Control's Magic Spell. Three cards in hand, and pass turn. We're so close. We need the we need the win on this. Time of Ice taps down Rekindling Phoenix. Oh man. They've got all the answers here. Getting in for six, dropping us down to 14. Two cards in hand. Give them the compass or opt. We decide to give them the compass, not forgetting that uh, the compass actually gains them three life. So that's kind of bad for us because it puts them a little bit farther out of reach. Go for Goblin Chain Whirler. Seeing a fitted pool cycle here. And then uh, could go for a shock. Decide to go for shock onto Karn there, dropping him down to one. So he does make another construct. Time of Ice also taps down the uh, Goblin Chain Whirler as well. Three cards in hand for opponent. Navigator's Compass again. <laughs> They're back up to 11. So it's kind of getting farther and farther out of reach as far as uh, how we're going to come back from this match. So very sad. Need to top deck into probably some lands and demanding dragon, giving them an uh, I think it was like an isolated chapel there. So keep in mind one card in hand is an isolated chapel, one card in hand is something else. Going for a fumigate, and they forget that the Rekindling Phoenix makes an elemental right there, and they scoop it up in embarrassment. Wow, <laughs> that is amazing. Let's get into uh, match five here and see what we can do. Uh, two lands in our opening hand here. Lava Runner, Lava Runner, Flame of Kale, Witch Lightning, and Chain Whirler. Going for a Lava Runner off the top. And uh, passing turn. Opponent is playing blue and a Rigged Map. This could be the Reservoir deck we're playing up against. Wizard's Lightning into a uh, one swing for the Lava Runner here. All we see now in our hand is we need to uh, thin our hand a little bit for Flame of Keld. Gonna go for Wizard's Lightning here, and they go Metallic Rebuke, so this is definitely the Reservoir deck. Getting in for four points of damage thanks to our Lava Runners and passing turn. See a Mountain there, gonna go for a four point swing, and then play out the Goblin Chain Whirler. Let's see what they have, maybe another uh, Rebuke here. Definitely another Rebuke, passing turn back. They're down to eight, but keep in mind the uh, Reservoir deck can come back from almost nothing. So they just need a couple turns. Psy Master Thopter's hitting the battlefield, then go for Ornithopter. And this is where they start to go really wide. Um, Goblin Chain Whirler would have been great here to top deck, but they, we did not get into that. 
We go Flame of Keld instead. Or actually, we go uh, Field of Ruin, then Flame of Keld, killing uh, the Inventors Fair so they don't gain life. Passing turn, since all they could do is a uh, double block with the Thopters. Inspiring Statuary is a card that's coming in. Two cards in hand for them. One blue mana. Thanks to Mox Amber. Looks like they're getting out a Karn here. Making a Construct, which is a 7-7. Seven, seven. So opponent is definitely back on top here. Pyromancer into Shock here. So we actually have the win. We're doing the math now. Uh, Pyromancer and Shock are 8 points of damage next turn. So if we can survive till next turn, we actually win this. Plus one Karn, Psy. No problem. All we need for them to do is not play Reservoir. <laughs> Going Thopter there. And this is probably the turn where they'll start attacking in. They have lots of damage, but they're going to go with Psy, Sack, two artifacts, draw a card. And then uh, here we go. We're going to go Pyromancer, do four points of damage, and then Shock, do four points of damage. And that is it. Let's get into game two. Definitely bringing in Smelt, taking out Demanding Dragon, thanks to them being super wide. And then a Fiery Cannonade is coming in as well. Thinking about what to take out. Maybe uh, just one Fiery Cannonade, taking out a Flame of Keld. Chain Willer is a fantastic card against the uh, Thopter list here because it just destroys everything once it's battlefield. Have kind of a terrible opening hand. Get into a not great opening hand, but a little bit okay. Thanks to you, Rekindling Phoenix. Go for a, a red mana pass turn. Two red mana. Going for an Omen Speaker. Omen Speaker is a card we ha I haven't really seen in the Reservoir lists, and it's doing some work for them. A 1-3 that can block most creatures early in the game. Very, very nice, especially against the Mono Red Aggro list. Uh, Puzzle Knot there for opponent. Field of Ruin off the top. We're getting into too many lands, uh, but we do mean we do have a Rekindling Phoenix on turn four, so that's not bad. Walking Ballista for opponent here. Going to go with a Lightning Strike to Walking Ballista. Opponent has a Rebuke for that, so they really want to keep that Ballista alive. Going to go for a Rekindling Phoenix to make sure that it gets around any kind of counters, like a Metallic Rebuke. And pass turn back to the opponent. Three cards in hand. The Void hitting the battlefield. They go with a Scry for one there. And getting out a Psy Master Thopterist. Go land, Lava Runner. And try to go for that Witcher's Lightning once again on the Walking Ballista. Now we have three mana up here. Now if they go for a Repel Metallic Rebuke, which they do, we just pay the three mana. Making sure that the uh, Ballista is killed, for sure. That does mean Lava Runner is hit for one here. Let's get in for four in the air. Pass turn. One card in hand for opponent. Two cards in hand now. So the best part about uh, the Reservoir deck is if they're out of like decks as far as if they're out of cards as far as top decking, they can still come back with a uh, paradoxical outcome. They go Aetherflux Reservoir, we get in for six points of damage. Looking at Wizards Lightning here as a way to uh, trade with Psy Master Thopter, so they go with a block there. Pass turn back, they block with a Thopter there. Two cards in hand, playing a land. What do they have here? A Karn Sign of Urza. They gain one life, have zero cards in hand. Mox, Amber, and Karn. So we're going to go Karn again for them. Give them the other Karn. Pass turn. Shock and Witcher's Li Lightning is in our hand. We go for an attack once again. Sidemaster Thopter should have been the Witcher's Lightning and Shock uh, target right then and there. Uh, but for whatever reason, we wait. Getting them down to 10 here. Passing turn back. Two cards in hand. Psy giving them Ornithopter or Prism. It's probably better to give them the Ornithopter there. Because Prism draws them a card. So once we see the activated ability happen here with Psy, we go for the kill on the Master Thopterist. So they're only able to create one Thopter and, again, the Thopter 0-2. Two. two cards in hand here. Going for another Karn Sign of Urza. Basically giving them the ability to kind of draw some more advantage cards. Getting that Prophetic Prism from the uh, Exiled post there. One card in hand. Another Rekindling Phoenix off the top for us. Probably was a good idea to go for the Rekindling Phoenix attack Karn, but they don't have any blocks there for the attacks dead on because of the Thopt or the uh, Reservoir. Plus one that we give them Void because that's all they had <laughs> as far as the two that we uh, we showed with Karn. 
Inspiring Statuary coming in. Mox Ember coming in as well. Again, they're just trying to gain life to uh, stay throughout the match. Prophetic Prism tapping for black mana, going to sacrifice that puzzle knot there. One card off the top. And passing turn here. Getting into a red mana. And then we're just attacking in with a uh, Kindling Phoenix. Again, attacking directly because of the blockers in the air. Commit to memory for Rekindling Phoenix here. And this is kind of where the match starts to unfurl for us because memory is in the graveyard now, meaning that they can just tap all their mana and refill their hand. And let's see if they go off here. It's always really fun to see the Aetherflux Reservoir deck go off. And uh, we had eight mana on our, fat, on our battlefield, but only got into one burn spell. So kind of sad here. One of the things to uh, maybe time out an opponent as far as um, if they're on the Reservoir deck is to, instead of hitting F6, hit OK every single time. So we have to manually respond. Keep in mind they're at 13 minutes, we're at 19. So our rate, rate of play is much quicker than their rate of play. They're at 25 so far. We're just holding out hope that they don't go off this turn. <laughs> That's basically it. Down to four for Karn here. Six cards in hand. Now all they really need is a paradoxical outcome. And they get it. Up to 30. But they bounced the uh, reservoir as well, so interesting. Replaying the reservoir I guess is fine. But all expertise bouncing stuff from our battlefield. And they recast the reservoir here. Now since they recast the reservoir, we have some they have so many uh like spells stacked up for the turn, so thopters and that kind of stuff. Uh, gives them the ability to uh, gain lots of life this turn. They just play Mox Amber and go up to 57, and that's it. We've seen enough. I'm going to go with a uh, concede here. Yep. Let's get into game number three here. Fiery Cannon definitely coming in, taking out a Lava Runner. And that's basically it. We could bring in a Meteor Golem, but I think we're just going to hit Submit and say OK. Play first? Yes. We just need to be faster than the deck. And uh, our opening hand is not great, but it's not terrible. We really need to get into a second mana. So go Fanatical Firebrand, hit him for one, and pass turn. We keep it because of Smelt and Fiery Cannonade. Playing out the Pyromancer here. And get in for one more. Five cards in hand, going for a Omen Speaker. Would have loved to have gotten into a Lightning Strike that turn, but we have Shock, so... We're still going to attack in here. They're going to block the Pyromancer, and we go Shock onto the Omen Speaker to make sure that Omen Speaker is destroyed this turn. Prophetic Prism for opponent drawing a card and getting into Ornithopter. So, Smelt onto Ornithopter here is fine, but they're kind of getting close to Reservoir, so we really want to uh, make sure if we, get, if we see the other Smelt to not use it except on the Reservoir. Void on the battlefield, three cards in hand for opponent. They tap out for the Reservoir, so we're actually a turn off for using Smelt on the Reservoir. Um, so this could spell Doom for us, but we really need to just uh, kind of focus on moving forward in the match. Goblin Chain Whirler doing a point and then getting in for one with the uh, Thyabrand here. Keep in mind, Fiery Cannonade is a good way to get rid of Thopters as well as uh, anything else on the battlefield that has just two toughness, like the Ornithopter there. Getting in for a land here. Go Rekindling Phoenix first and then get in for uh, four points of damage. They decide not to block the uh, Fanatical Firebrand, which is very strange, and they go down to nine. Two cards in hand for opponent, going for a Psy Master Thopterist, up to 10, go for a land here, and then we're just gonna use Fiery Cannonade, and then uh, attack in with uh, Chain Whirler and Rekindling Phoenix. Now, if they go with a the block there, Chain Whirler would have destroyed Psy Master Thopterist. But down to three here, they really need something. Two cards in hand, do they find it? Puzzle not going down to two. Are they going to find anything or is this going to be the game? That's it. Nice. All right, guys, those are the matches. Hope you liked them. If you liked the video, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and make sure to comment down below what you want me to cover next as far as decks or uh, anything else in the future for sure. I uh, might do a Q&A in the future as well. And if you want to catch me on stream, I stream Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 11 a.m. Central Standard Time on Twitch. I'll put that in the comments down below pinned as well. I love you guys, and I will see you in the next video. Peace. Thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel for more awesome MTG content just like this. And make sure to tap the bell icon to be notified whenever a video is made live.
if you want to keep watching content, here are two more videos for you. This video and many others are sponsored by MTGO Traders and Cape Fear Games. Buy and sell digital singles to build your online collection today with MTGO Traders, and get your paper singles, accessories, and much more from Cape Fear Games. Whatever your magic needs, both places have you covered.